Stephen, do you know where to go on campus if somebody's suffering with depression? Oh, uh, well, I haven't had any personal experience, but I would, uh, I would assume maybe uh, advising an enrichment there and sure, but otherwise I, uh, I don't really know. Joseph, do you know where to go on campus if someone's suffering with depression? Uh, I know that you can definitely go talk to one of your advisors or your counselor that you have that helps make your schedule or someone else that you can talk to, sure. Good morning, Ms. Burke. How are you? Fine. How are you? Very good, thanks. I'm curious to know, um, what can you tell us about uh, depression? Okay, depression is a very, uh, unfortunately, a very common disorder, and it is generally characterized by a prolonged sense of sadness. Some people feel overwhelmed, some people feel that they all of a sudden seem very anxious, they feel unable to cope, they may describe themselves as feeling blue. Uh, many people will experience a loss of energy, and some people the energy loss can be so severe that it's difficult for them to care for themselves physically with things like showering, uh, getting up, getting to class, getting to work. Many people, when they're depressed, they lose interest in activities that used to interest them, or they may engage in activities but find they get no enjoyment from them. Uh, uh, many people frequently will uh, report that they have difficulty sleeping. Either they sleep too much or they can't fall asleep or wait very early in the morning or wait many times during the night. Others will report that they have changes in their appetite where some people feel they are overeating and other people feel that they just can't eat at all. Uh, many people find, especially with students, what we notice is they'll report that they have difficulty focusing, paying attention, concentrating, difficulty with memory, and these are all symptoms that can really severely impair their ability to function effectively as students. Uh, the sense of helplessness and hopelessness is many times very overwhelming, so what they, when they look at the future, they really don't see that things are going to change. Uh, some may have uh, suicide ideations where they think about suicide, and the most severe form of depression, you may find that people actually develop a suicide plan. So they actually have a method and a mode of, of how they plan to take their lives. And generally, if anybody reports that they have these feelings of um, suicide and that they really feel that they've developed a plan, and, they, and uh, then that would be somebody at extreme risk. Typically, when we assess for suicide, we look at three things. The frequency of these suicide thoughts, the intensity, so the more frequent and the more intense, the more a person is at risk, and the duration, how long do these thoughts last? Are they fleeting? Do they last just a few seconds? Are they thoughts that really are pervasive and they, people are spending a lot of time thinking about this? These would all be like warning signs that a person definitely needs some intervention. And then where can a person go for help? Well, fortunately in New York, we're not at a shortage of resources. Here at NYIT, on both the Manhattan and our Westbury campus, we have a counseling and wellness center, and our counselors are on call. So that if a student is living in the residence halls and an RA or a professional staff member, you know, becomes aware of the fact that someone is expressing the, the uh, thoughts that they want to kill themselves, they would generally contact us and we would, we would address it even after hours. Uh, we have a LifeNet, which is a suicide hotline that uh, has professionals available that speak many languages, so that that's a 24-hour um, crisis intervention. If someone has a family member or a friend that they feel is really at risk for suicide, we recommend that they call 911 or take their friend to, or family member to the nearest emergency room. And on our website, the school website. Do we have uh, any links to any of this information? Yes, we have very. Uh, we have devoted a lot of time to uh, addressing almost every issue that we've we've noticed that students have have expressed concern. Uh, so that on our website we have free online screenings where students can do their own screening, and at the end of the screening it gives them a list of resources that are available. We also have a just-in-case app, and the link is on the website. This is a QR code that can be downloaded to an iPhone or an Android, and it gives a, a great variety of resources, both on and off campus, as well as some helpful hints. If, you, if a student feels they can't cope with it, maybe their friend has expressed some ideas of suicide where they will give them some information about you know, how to handle that situation. We also have on our website a section on depression, and we also list many resources for students on and off campus.
Can you please explain to me uh, how September became Suicide Prevention Awareness Month? Yes. Uh, the World Health Organization in 2001 recognized that suicide was a leading cause of death globally. So that it's estimated about one million people globally commit suicide a year. So it really is a crisis. So in 2001 they designated September 10th World Suicide Awareness Day to increase awareness and prevention uh, strategies to hopefully, you know, educate those that may be living with someone that is expressing suicidal thoughts on how to intervene, um, and as well as the individual that may be experiencing depression, just to let them know that it is an epidemic and that they're not alone. Sadly, I think when many people are depressed, they feel that no one understands how they're feeling and that they're the only ones that are suffering. So the idea is to put the word out there that this is an, uh, a global problem. It's estimated in the United States that about every 15.2 minutes, someone um, commits suicide. So that it is definitely an epidemic. In the college age population, it's the third leading cause of death. And uh, most people that do it, uh, commit suicide um, are using drugs or alcohol at the time of their death. What does the college do to increase awareness about suicide and depression? Okay. During uh, September, we have suicide prevention and awareness tables that are located in the cafeterias on campus so that students will maybe uh, pick up information. Uh, October, we have su um, National Depression Screening Day so that uh, we have free screenings where we have one-on-one -on -one meetings with students and if they essentially screen that they are experiencing depression or some suicide thoughts, we then will arrange counseling at either on or off campus. Uh, and then we generally do do a, 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 a training of RAs, so on both campuses, all RA, RAs are trained in how to recognize depression and suicide um, ideation, so that if they're noticing a student maybe isn't going to class or isn't participating, or maybe they notice a change in the person's behavior, they will usually do, you know, they're trained to do an outreach and then connect them to, to professionals on campus. Do you feel that possibly the workload or uh, stress factors could contribute to a person's depression? Definitely. I think most people experience a tremendous sense of isolation when they're feeling depressed. So that if you have an, uh, a workload that's very burdensome and maybe you don't have enough time to enjoy yourself or to participate in fun activities, you start to feel even more isolated. Uh, there also is a genetic predisposition for depression, so many times there are other family members that are depressed, so that the person may feel that this is a, a way that they're supposed to feel and may ha be hesitant to discuss it with other people. I think there is in our society, you know, a greater feeling of isolation, where people are lacking many times face-to-face -face contact, so that it, it gives an individual who's feeling depressed you know, um, the idea that nobody is there for them and nobody wants to help them or maybe there aren't resources available to them where they could begin to address their problem and feel better. I, as a student, might feel uncomfortable reporting someone that I feel might be experienced depression because I wouldn't want them to get in trouble, mm -hmm. possibly, and I could be wrong, yes. you know, and stir trouble. How would I in that situation be able to go about helping the individual that might possibly need help but without causing them trouble? I would recommend that if you're with someone on campus and you feel that there is a possibility they may be suicidal or that they're experiencing depression, it could be helpful to just walk them over to the counseling center and ask them if they'd like to speak to someone. If they're resistant, certainly there are other ways that you could direct them to the website you know, direct them to the Just In Case app or give them some helplines. Uh, if you really feel that someone has demonstrated um, suicide thoughts where they tell you that by tomorrow I won't be here. If you notice people are starting to give things away. If someone was very s depressed and down and sad and then all of a sudden without any intervention they seem very up and, and uh, happy and their mood has changed dramatically, that generally is a warning sign that many times a person has made the decision to kill themselves. So I would say in situations like that, it's better to have someone be upset with you for a short period of time than to ignore it and then possibly have them make an attempt that could be successful. 
If someone reports to the Dean of Campus Life or to the Counseling Center, we generally, when we reach out to the student, we don't let them know who has told us so that we protect the identity of the person that's trying to help. And that the way that we intervene with a student is never in a punitive manner. So that a student would never be in trouble for, um, for bringing another student in that they're concerned about. Or if we become aware of a student and we do do an intervention, it's never punitive. It's always in a method where we're demonstrating to the student that we're concerned about their well-being and that we're taking steps to help them get well. That's fantastic. Thank okay. you for your time. Thank you.